Staff at Dalhousie's Aquatron Laboratory have been busy gathering marine animals since last summer. The collection of sea creatures will eventually move into the Beatty Center for Marine Biodiversity to a new aquarium that's currently under construction. While there's no date for an official opening, we got a sneak peek. So we're in sort of the ramp up stage of the aquarium, doing the things that we can do before we can put water in the exhibits and, and animals. So we're collecting uh, what we can right now. We've got different ways of, of catching fish. Some we get in the wild and some of them we, we get from other facilities. Perhaps the craziest right now are the seahorses that we just brought in from Guelph. We've had them almost a month and they're actually making babies and making more right now. So everybody's really excited about the seahorses. So we thought, you know, this would be a great species to include in our exhibits. Um, get people asking questions like, oh, you have Nova Scotia sea life, why is there a seahorse here? Once in a while we would hear of uh, seahorses in the wild and locally here in Nova Scotia in the St. Margaret's Bay, Mahone Bay area. But now it seems like every year we're hearing more and more about them. Uh, just a great opportunity to uh, do something that people aren't quite expecting. A lot of the other stuff um, we're collecting where we can. We have sticklebacks and mummy chugs and sculpins and sea ravens, which are really fun because they're uh, almost like puppy dogs and how they behave with our staff. So we try not to pick favorites, but I love the sea ravens. Um, they're really interactive. Um, it took us a while to get them trained and feeding, so we've um, kind of developed a relationship with them over time. Um, they're really spectacular to look at uh, and really friendly, so I think they'll be a great addition to the aquarium. The sea ravens come in three different colors, uh, red, brown, and yellow. So we're hoping to get a few more and have a variety of, of each different color. That'll be a great opportunity for the public to become interested and also invested in the species that we have right in our own backyard. So my favorite is our deep sea octopus. Um, we refer to her as a she because the males have a reproductive tentacle and we have not been able to identify that on the one that we have. And she's easily become my favorite because she's pretty charismatic. She has the ability to change colors. So depending on her mood, she can shift between like a light, a white, pale color or more of a deeper orange. So when we greet her, we can sometimes see the mood change within the color of her skin. I'm sure a lot of people in Nova Scotia don't even know that we have octopus, so that'll be cool for them to see some of the species that you don't usually get to see in the shallow water. And then sort of getting to know how intelligent they actually are, because she is such a small little, small little thing. She has got a lot of personality. We're the captive holding center for the Atlantic Whitefish uh, program and we're working to try and save this species. We have more in this room than exist anywhere else in the world. It's really, really important. You know, the Atlantic Whitefish is uh, about a 14 million year old species. It's very unique in its lineage and, and its relationship to other close species it's closely related to. And, and biodiversity is just so important today. If we want to continue to live on our planet in the way we do, we have to protect it. We have to look after that biodiversity. And every time we lose a species, it's another, you know, draw a line through another one and the, and the count goes down. And, and that's bad for the planet and it's bad for people too. The blue whale. Yeah, so the blue whale, we're really fortunate to have it was a long eight-year project for our, our university veterinarian, Chris Harvey Clark, who led students to the beach, I think, eight years ago, brought it to our faculty of agriculture in Churro, where they did a lot of the um, treatment of the bones and getting them ready, and then it went away for a while, and now it's back hanging in the, uh, in the atrium in the area where the Beattie Biodiversity Center will be. How much of a draw do you think that'll be for people coming into this place? I think it's two things. It's a draw for people to come in and see that. It's the largest vertebrate animal to ever be on Earth, so it's, you know, it's a big deal to see one. Um, it's not something that you can just look at on the harbor or see in a whale tour, so that's really important. But it also sets the ambiance for our, our ocean research as well and gives us sort of that feel of, you just look up there and see it, it's pretty cool. Even for those of us who've been working, I've been doing this for a very long time, and I still look at it and go, wow, that's pretty cool. This is a long process to opening an education center like this one. Uh, it's a combination of uh, interactive 
non-living exhibits and living exhibits and um, it just it takes us some time we haven't finished construction yet we're doing what we can do which is collect the species and, and learn how to feed them because some of these we've never worked with before so we want to give them the best life possible so we only brought in a few to start and, and a little bit more and a little bit more and then probably by midsummer we'll have everything we need uh, to open whenever that happens. We've had to train not just my full-time staff, animal care staff, but our veterinarian has to learn how to look after these animals. I have to. We really want the health of the animal to be the most important thing we're thinking of. I, I think it's really completes what Dalhousie's doing. You know, we have a world-leading ocean research program in marine biology. All our faculties touch on the oceans. Um, and now the public can come in and get a bigger vision of what that is, see it and learn from it. And I think that's really, really important. We have to find ways in science to communicate with the public. We just can't write articles in journals and hope people learn from that. I think it's important that we work with the media but, and, and the public and science communicators. So being people to be able to come on campus and see things and ask questions, that's really great.